Now live from London is Alec Van Gelder. He's a project director for Policy Network, a think tank based in London. Alec, thanks for joining us on Al Jazeera. Really appreciate it. Um, it does seem that it's one of three things, isn't it? Natural disaster, uh, civil war, or even just bad governance that creates these problems. But throwing money at it, which has been done in the past, isn't really the answer anymore. So what's the new thinking? Well, the, the there, I mean, it's not necessarily new thinking, it just has to be applied in, in, in the best way possible and that's really just to let agricultural markets in poor countries work. And that sounds rather facile, but that is actually the only way that uh, the situation is going to improve on a sustainable basis. Um, Kenya actually, ironically, back in the last famine in 2006, uh, produced more than enough food to feed the millions of people who went hungry. The problem was and this is very symptomatic of, of lots of other poor countries, is that the farmers who were producing all the food in the southern part of the country simply weren't able to sell uh, the extra, their surplus, to people in the north. And that's because of bad and inept government policy, basic trade restrictions that make it uneconomical and impossible for farmers to sell to consumers. Do you then uh, think that's, that a, that's the situation. Sorry, no, I, sorry you're go going to say that was the situation. Do you think then a new approach has to be used? Because if you're saying that then, for example, $22 billion has been set aside by the wealthy countries uh, this year for food security. Do you think a lot of that money should be, should be spent on infrastructure of getting uh, food producers to be able to get their food to markets where they can actually sell it at a profit and, and actually sustain themselves and the community around them? Well, actually, no. I, I think we're thinking of it in the wrong way. We don't need to give them money to, to help them make money. Africans are just as capable as anyone else in terms of finding m their own markets. They, 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 they've demonstrated that they can do this in lots of other ways, but there are such tremendous barriers, especially in the agricultural sector, that are imposed directly on them by their own governments. African farmers pay 60% more to export their products than any other African business. Those barriers are just completely stupid, especially given the fact that 70% of Africa's workforce is involved in the agricultural sector. It makes no sense, but yet these policies continue to be implemented. Last year, the Food and Agriculture Organization recommended that tariffs on all food products be completely removed in light of the food crisis, yet 40 countries around the world implemented new tariffs. 15 of those were in sub-Saharan Africa. It just doesn't make sense. If that, if that then comes to how perhaps the, the finances work, I mean, countries like Haiti, uh, countries like in the, in the Horn of Africa at the moment, there are eight nations there, including Somalia and Ethiopia, who are right. suffering from drought. I mean, there it's not actually about growing produce and getting it to the right markets and, and how bad the international community is for setting tariffs. They haven't got the food, have they? What they need is the infrastructure to be built and to get that built and to get water to the right areas and to get plants planted. They need good government. They need, they need governments to actually help them, their own governments. Good governance is certainly a recipe for success, but I think we have, I mean, ju just going back to the, the question posed in the previous instance, money isn't the answer. Ethiopia has received billions and billions of dollars on so many different programs, and yet these programs go nowhere because there, there are no incentives on the ground for people who actually have to live and breathe in Ethiopia and, and run businesses and send their children to school and feed their families. There are no incentives for... for for these people who need these things to make everything work. And no amount of aid is going to fix that. Drought has been common in East Africa for centuries. Uh, this isn't a new problem. What, what they need is the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. And that adaptability is only something that the market can give. Uh, go more government control, more government involvement, whether it's their own government or other governments, isn't going to help. It's proven failure, actually. Mm. Well, we'll see how World Food Day affects or has an impact on those governments. Uh, Alec Van Gelder, thanks for joining us from London.